Nick Robinson here for Polygon.com, and today we're taking an exclusive first look at a game called Celeste, which is the new game coming from the creators of Towerfall. Uh, now, obviously, it's been a few years uh, since Towerfall came out, and this is a, a pretty different game, although I, I think right off the bat you'll see uh, some differences just in terms of it being a 2D side scrolly platformer thing, but this is actually, as far as we know, a completely single-player, uh, isolated experience. And I think this game, uh, maybe this is a little presumptuous of me, it seems to tap into the creator Matt Thorson's roots uh, in in being in love with with hardcore single-player platformers. So this game is actually being developed uh, by Matt Thorson uh, in collaboration with Noel Barry, who's working on a game called Skytorn as well as Celeste. Um, they actually, th this game has an interesting history. They collaborated on a game for this fictional game system called the Pico 8 last year, uh, which was also called Celeste. And you can actually go and play that. It's it's free online, and it's mechanically pretty similar to this. This is obviously a much more gussied up, uh, much more polished version of this game that's making its, its sort of debut in the public uh, at at PAX West next weekend. Now, what's interesting about this game is that it's a it's a platformer in, in a lot of traditional ways, but with a couple of really interesting mechanics right off the bat that, that really set it apart. Um, so the, the core things that I think are interesting about Celeste from the initial moves that you have is that you can kind of wall hang by holding the right trigger. So any wall you, you bump up against by squeezing uh, RT, you can kind of hang uh, and suspend yourself there. Not permanently, only for a temporary amount of time. Eventually the, the main character, who by the way, interestingly, not named Celeste, we don't know what her name is, uh, she can hang for a limited amount of time before losing her grip and falling. Um, the other major mechanic, uh, and you might maybe saw this in that, that little prologue bit, is that she's got this dash move. So by hitting X, uh, she can kind of burst forward uh, in, in any direction, any direction you point the analog stick. Um, and from there you're able to do a dash. Now that dash can only be used once before touching the ground, so you'll see her hair is kind of red, and then you dash, it turns blue, and you're not allowed to dash again until you hit the ground again. Uh, all over the levels, by the way, are these little, I guess they're strawberries, uh, these collectibles that are kind of uh, hidden out of the way. At first they're pretty easy to get, but very quickly uh, they, they get pretty sinister. And it's a game that I think has a really clear visual language, which is really important for a game like this. Uh, you just immediately know how everything uh, works and what everything does. And, and right away, like from, from the very beginning, these first few screens do, I think, an excellent job of explaining the mechanics. And this screen right here, the one I just completed with the strawberry that flew away, uh, is actually a, a remake of a stage from the original Celeste for the Pico 8. Um, this man is yelling YOLO, which I thought was worth including. Um, but what's, what's interesting is, like, this, this game does something that I love a lot, which is it, it gives you the core mechanics for free, basically. It tells you everything you need to know right off the bat for free. Uh, but then there are all these little things that you sort of learn by doing. Um, so, for example, there's a, a hard mode version of, of all the worlds in the game that is, that is much, much more challenging. But they don't really tell you, at least in this build of the game, how to unlock that stuff. Um... Here's, a, here's another example of, of how this game is just uh, pretty pretty hardcore, I think. Uh, there's a lot of retrying and doing stuff over and over. Um, a lot of dying. If, if you're the type of person who does not like dying in a game, I maybe wouldn't recommend this for you, but if you're the type of person who loves the type of, of platformer where you just try over and over uh, and kind of learn how to do something, this is exactly one of those games. Um, you'll, you'll notice that green gem there, when I broke it, it actually recharged my dash move in midair, which becomes a very uh, important platforming element later in the game. Another thing that I think is really cool about this game is that it is riddled with secrets. It's I, I don't feel comfortable calling it like a Metroidvania exactly because uh, the, the version we're playing is kind of built out into these sort of discrete screens. You, you load into a level, basically, and then within that level, I'm very proud of pulling that off, by the way, you can kind of, fr you're free to explore. There's some uh, backtracking if you're, if you're looking for that. There's a lot of hidden stuff, uh, a lot of alternate paths, a lot of unlocks. Um, um, but, but yeah, I, it's, it's, I feel like even if it was just the climbing and dashing mechanic, uh, here's a good example of how that climbing mechanic works right there. There's so much that you can get out of that, and, and I think one thing that, that Matt's really good at, if you've watched our, our video series, Devs Make Mario, um, there's a scene in that where we show uh, that, that uh, Matt Thorson, who's one of the developers of this game, uh, as a kid used to sketch out Mario levels. And before Mario Maker even came out, uh, Matt was sort of doing these, these streams on Twitch of these Super Mario World mods he was doing himself just for fun. He's, he's clearly a person who is, is obsessed with level design, um, and this game is kind of, to me, this game is, feels like taking that and, and putting it out in the world in, in its kind of most robust form. Um, it's, it's, I feel like, the, at least what I've played of this game, and obviously it's still a little early, there's another, just secret, there's just so many secrets in this. Um, it, it's just, it explores every mechanic, so I think I actually go about this kind of a weird way, I think I could have gone through those spikes there. Um, but right off the bat, like, even, this is the second, uh, stage in this demo, 
uh, and you immediately unlock another mechanic that kind of changes how everything works. So for the first few minutes of this this level you're seeing, there are these kind of sparkly, uh, I guess, astral cubes floating around that don't seem to behave differently from normal walls until you get this unlock, and now you can do this sort of dash through them, and, and right away it starts kind of quietly tutorializing how this works. So for example, if you dash through it and hit a wall, you immediately die. You don't have any control when you're in that dash, so you have to really plan this out uh, very quickly. Um, and and it, it's just it, it feels like a, a really elegant escalation of these mechanics. Here's a here's an area a little bit later in the demo uh, where you're being chased by what appears to be I don't want to talk too much about story stuff, but it appears to be some sort of shadow version of yourself. It's it's a little vague on on details. If you want to play this demo yourself, by the way, and you're going to PAX West, this will be available um, to play at on the show floor. Um, but like it's it just it kind of it, my time with this demo was kind of. Uh, punctuated by these moments of like feeling like I had finally mastered a mechanic and then immediately on the next screen being challenged by the game in a really meaningful way. I, I, I died a bunch. You don't see all of that in this video. Oh, there, there's another noteworthy mechanic, by the way. Um, if you use up all your strength by doing a wall hold for too long and then you land on the ground, uh, the main character actually needs a second to catch her breath. Um, which actually wound up killing me in that instance because you're being chased by this echo of all your previous moves. Um, and, and here's kind of another mechanic that I, I think you could see a little bit in the original Pico 8 version, these sort of keys. So by grabbing this, it actually alters the stage, um, which becomes very interesting when you're being chased by someone who's echoing all your moves, because you have to find a path out that is not the same as your path into that little nook there. Um, I, I just, I'm, I'm very excited by what I've, I've played of Celeste so far. Um, I think it's... I, I was actually a big fan of, of Matt Thorson for, for kind of a long time now. He had this game back in like the Halcyon days of Flash platformers called Money Seas. It was a, it was a game you could play on, on Congregate and maybe a few other places um, that was just this really conspicuously tight <laughs> platformer um, that I was like, why is this so polished? Why does this feel so good? It had this great double jump mechanic and I was like, this is almost like nothing against Flash games, but that game always stood out to me as being surprisingly uh, polished for for a game you could play for free on like a website like congregate back in the the, the mid 2000s like that it, it always stood out to me and and that's so why I've kind of had an eye on on Matt Thorson's games for a long time and this feels like an escalation of kind of the ideas you saw in in money season even in towerfall uh, there's a lot of very technical moves you can pull off in this game like when, once you get a feel for the controls you have like it feels like and this is something that i think is so important for a game that's as as twitchy as a platformer uh, i feel like i have a ton of control over the character when i'm playing this game i feel like you you can really you you learn this the move set very rapidly and what you can execute with that limited move set like the game only uses three buttons so far but what i can pull off with those three buttons once you get good uh, is is pretty amazing and and it also is a game that's unafraid to challenge the player as you can see with screens like this one right here um, I'm, I'm actually kind of terrified to see what the hard mode version of this stage would look like because even uh, in this early area it's it's doing stuff that's really hard and and you're also doing things that I think uh, are interesting if you're the if you're a collector who wants to get everything in the game the strawberries can be pretty terrifying because you end up in situations like on that last screen i think there's another one coming up here where in order to progress in the stage you actually end up blocking off your path to an unlockable so you would have to come back to this area and be like okay how do i do this without preventing myself from getting this pickup it's it's it feels very complete there's a lot of meat on the bones of this game is how i would put it which is kind of a weird way to put it but whatever like it it feels like it is it is kind of just this pure chunk of really really polished platformer gameplay and and they insist i've i've spoken to the devs and they they say it's it's still in a very early state um but it it already the feel is there and that's that's kind of the elusive thing that is so important to nail in a, in a game like this one. So, um, as someone who loves Towerfall, I, I think this is a very different product based on what I've played so far. It's a, it's a much more isolated experience, but there's like, all my favorite indie games are these games that sort of encompass this conversation between the level designer and the player. Uh, and it's something that I think platformers are really, really skilled at and only platformers can do. And this game is that incarnate. It is this nonstop 
feedback loop, and I really enjoyed my time with it. If you're a fan of platformers with great level design, this this game, so far at least, appears to be exactly that, and it made me really, really happy even based on my early time with it. If you'd like to try it for yourself, Celeste is going to be playable next week at PAX Prime at the Indie Mega Booth location. Uh, but yeah, I've been Nick Robinson. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to see more from this game and more from other upcoming games, uh, feel free to subscribe right here on youtube.com slash polygon. We do gameplay videos, uh, all sorts of stuff all week long, every day. Uh, there's a ton of stuff coming, including uh, a lot of really great coverage of some of the, the indie games and other games on display at this year's PAX West in Seattle. So subscribe right here for more. In the meantime, I've been Nick Robinson, and thank you for watching.